Hi everyone. So this is going to be a short video on how to add fans to your retired server hardware. Now why would you want to add fans to it? Because servers generally have fans on the case or chassis if you will. They're very powerful fans like 7, 8, 9 amp fans. Starts from one end, goes through the whole system out the back end. And the system is configured in such a way that every component gets that air. The fans will be here, like liner fans here, blow this way. Memory will be this way. The CPU heatsink fins will be this way. Keep going through, you might have a GPU there. GPU fin stack, also that way. So, cool air comes in, the warm air comes out. So there's no need to add fans to individual components. But, of course, when you retire the server hardware, you sell it on the marketplace, there are no fans on it, and you think, oh, cool, I want an HPA or controller of some kind, put it on my computer, my desktop computer, so I can add like a, do a dozen hard drives. But what you don't know is that controller gets very, very hot, and it needs active cooling. So the point of this video is to show you how to add 12 volt fans to your PCB. So like a lot of things, there are standards in the world. This is true for PCI Express standard. If you look at your PCI Express cards, any of them, they'll all be the same. You'll have a small notch on one side and short or longer notch on the other side. But we're going to focus on the first notch and only the first notch because that's all we need, which is the power. You'll have 12 volts, you'll have ground, and you'll have 3.3 volts. We are going to borrow the 12 volts from each card and wire it up to a fan. Okay, so off to the workbench. Now, how do you know where to take the power from? So you can look up a pinout and you can just see there and then you can just go to it. But if you, for whatever reason, are unable to access the pinout, we are going to do it the, not a hard way, but the fun way, probing around. So we get to it. All right, it's probing time. We got our cards. We got our multimeter. Now this multimeter I actually bought new a while ago. And I've been meaning to, I don't know, give a kind of preview of it. So what I'll do now, I plugged it in. You might see this unique design, unique fan design. We got a buck boost potentiometer here. Anyway, that's not what I'm here to show you. You can see about it in another video. So, got my multimeter on. Auto mode. So, what I want is I want... Ah, I missed it. DC. So, I can I put that there? I can't see it. How about that? Still can't see it. How about that? Okay, can't see. So, we are going to check. See all of this? All of this is ground. Ground, 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 ground. So, I can put it here. And then we're going to look to see if we can find 12 volts. There we go. 12 volts right there. And 3 volts. 3 volts right there. So, we've got 12 on this first pin. And I think the second pin or the pin on the other side. Yeah. 3.3. Okay, cool. So that was easy. So now we'll turn it off. We'll plug in the smaller card. Oh, no. Wrong card, this one. Too long. Too long. See? Too long. So I got this one specifically for this. This one for the desktop. So yeah, we'll plug this one in. Oh, fan clearance. We're in. Alright. 
Now, what we're looking for is where we can find 12 volts on this board. So I might have to put my big head in the way. Any of these? So you can see this probe point is 3.3. This probe point is 12. So, sometimes you get some wonderful things on the board called probe points. Well, I guess that's what these are for, probing. So, and I'm guessing, yep, 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts. And if you have a closer look at the PCB, I might do some closer shots. You will see a sort of, let's just, let's just use colors green, light green and dark green for the sake of ease. So you see some light green, and then you see some dark green, some dark green around it. That is like nothing. And the light green is like copper, just been poured. It's called copper pour. Sometimes it's called ground fill, but in this case, it's not ground. It's used as VCC 12 volts. And this one, three volts. So we have nice access to 12 volts here and three volts here. And like I said, all of this, is ground 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 and the same on the plate here this is also ground so if you're looking for ground it's easy to find usually screw holes are ground or the back plate is ground or the shielding this is also ground so you're spoiled for choice for ground but in this case we have 12 volts here and we have three volts here Oh, sorry, 3.3. I keep saying 3 volts. 3.3. Alright, so I'm going to turn this off. We found our powers for this card. Yeah, that's warm. Because it's not quite. Now, we're going to plug in this one. Yay! Can it fit? <laughs> I haven't plugged this one in yet. Okay. Can fit. And fit. Get in there. Alright, now this one, actually, I'll take it out again and I'll show you. This one I saw was very easy. I'll do some close up shots of this first. I can't really see. But over here, we have that light green part that I told you that's all just copper. All the way over here, and these holes. These holes we can call as, I guess, vias. Now these vias are shielded, which means that, shielded? I forgot, one way or another. Um, but they've got actual copper rings around them. So this copper, it's a hole. It goes all the way through to the other side of the board. And so this side will also be 12 volts. So like I said before, the first pin I was thinking is 12 volts. Maybe the second pin was 12 volts, but I was mistaken. So it's like pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin 4, pin 5, pin 6 kind of thing, you know? So sometimes it'll say front side pin or back side pin, or sometimes it'll say pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, like that. So these looks like three, two or three pins are 12 volts on this side, and another couple of pins are also 12 volts on this side. So you can find 12 volts on this card very easy. I already found it. I bit my life. When I probe this one, 12 volts is going to come. 3 volts. 3 volts I'm going to have to take from somewhere else, but I'll show you where to find it on this card, but unless you've got something 3.3 volts you want, it's not going to be any use to us. We only want 12 volts. So, it's in. Power on. Probe on ground. Show me 12 volts. And 12 volts, and 12 volts, and 12 volts. So, the manufacturer of this card, LSI, or whoever made this brand of LSI, uh, this brand of HVA, they were very nice to us and they already put nice little holes for us to stick something in. So, this is 12 volts, 3.3 volts. Uh, I don't see it easily over here. On the other side, uh, on the other side, we might be able to find it easily. But if you look at these ICs, 
some of these ICs, they might require 5 volts, 12 volts, or 3.3 volts. So you could just borrow 3.3 volts from one of them. So let's try that. Uh, it's nothing that's ground. So this one is giving 5 volts. How about these other probe points? Huh. <laughs> I just made everything easy, sir. 12 volts here, and they just checked us 3.3 volts here, sir. All of these 3.3 volts, 3.3 volts, 3.3 volts. How about over here? One. One. Okay. So, this particular card, 12 volts here, 3.3 volts here. And if you're unsure, you can always check the pinout. All right. So, now we're going off to the workbench to do some soldering. And this multimeter is awesome, by the way. So the end result is everything works as expected. The heatsink and fan mounting system is a bit, it's, it's fine for me. <laughs> it's not very elegant, but I'm sure some creative people out there can figure out a nice way of doing it. I mean, if I really wanted to sell this as a professional project, I'll probably have it as, you know, those metal clips because the heatsink and the fans well, the fans are standard size, you know, like square, but the heat sinks are more of a rectangle shape. So mm, I don't think I've seen a rectangle shape fan before. Anyway, uh, Cable tires, the design works, so it's fine for me. Might not be fine for you. So if you like this kind of content and you found something interesting in the video, please, you can let me know in the comments below. I also have a Discord server where you can find outtakes, additional content, and you can just 
to a more one-on-one -on -one conversation with me if you like because I mentioned in another video whenever I get a comment on YouTube I get it like 5, 10, maybe the next day later so and Discord is more prompt with sending push notifications <laughs> and like every video I'll end with a movie quote and the movie quote is Am I saying meow? <laughs> Thanks for watching and see you next time.